Hi, this is Alan Cho, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you the basic usage of Emitter and how to set up the Emitter engine. First, let's go to the Emitter project homepage. The URL is code.google.com slash p slash emitter. Okay, and here are three featured downloads. The first one is the example pack. The second one is the compressed OIR pack, which includes the documentation and the source action script files. The third one is the compiled Swig file, which is, what's, uh, which is what we want. So let's download this and uh, I'll dump it onto my desktop. Okay, it's done. Now switch to Flash or, and create a new ActionScript 3 Flash file. And go to the Preferences window and select this ActionScript tag and ActionScript 3 settings here. Click this icon to browse to the SWIG file. Okay, now I'll select this emitter SWIG. Okay, okay. Now we're ready to use the emitter. Uh, and before we're going, uh, before doing some coding, we have to first draw our particle. I'll just simply draw a rectangle with a uh, um, white fill and black line outline. Okay, and convert convert it to symbol. I'll name it box and make it registration port at its center. And open advanced settings. Select this export export for action script checkbox, and I'll just leave the class name as it is box. Okay, and don't show it again, whatever. And I'll delete this instance on the stage. Open the action panel, and now we're ready to do some coding. First, we have to import the emitter package, which is idv.cucat.emitter. Okay, and now create a particle object. Var p particle new particle and we're going to use our box symbol so pass in this box class object and now we're going to create a particle source bar s and I'm going to use point source oops point source and I'm going to add this particle to the source so I'll type s add particle and p okay and the third, uh, the third thing we're going to create is an emitter object. Var emitter. Okay. Now here you have to uh, optionally you can pass in a display object container, and but if you don't pass in any container, the emitter will use itself as the default container because emitter is a subclass of the sprite class. So I'll just leave it blank. Okay. And now add the source to the emitter emitter at source s and I'm going to move the emitter to the center of the stage x equals 320 and y equals 200 and I'm going to add this emitter to the display list at child meter okay so now in order to activate this emitter we have to con uh, we have to constantly call its step method so I'm going to use the interframe event at event listener event interframe oh, oops interframe okay and you can directly pass the emitter emitter's uh, step method as a event listener so I'll type event uh, emitter dot step okay this is the step method but used directly as a listener Okay, and I'll press Ctrl Enter to test the movie. And now you can see this particle is emitting from the center of the stage. Oops, I think we need more frame rate to make it look smoother. So I'll give it 60. Like default. Okay. So now you can see the effect is smoother. And we can play around with several parameters. For example, we can use the initial scale, 0, and final scale, 0. And the scale parameter by default is 1. Just typing this for clarity. Okay. And we want this 
particle. We want particles to grow from zero scale to one and then go back to zero when they die. And this particle has a life, uh, life property. If, we t if I type 50, it means this particle will live for 50 emitter step call. And I'll set up the scale grow range to 10, which is default by default 0. And scale decay range, also 10. This means from, uh, during the first 10 units of its life span, this emitter, uh, this particle would grow from 0 scale to 1. And at its last 10 units of lifespan, this particle would die from 1 to 0 scale. Okay, so let's see the effect. Okay, so you can see particles are growing from zero scale to one, and then die again to uh, die again at zero scale. Okay, so this is the basic usage of the emitter engine.